Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make little decorative windows like these for your builds totally from scratch. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Often when I do a building or something like this where there's windows involved, I will utilize pre-cut MDF window frames. I get mine from shiftinglands.com, but you can absolutely make these kind of things yourself. The only real cost is extra time. So often when I make a build, I might utilize a tool or a product in order to save myself time. Well, I guess I can't do this build because I don't have that thing. You, you absolutely can do so many of these things without the things that I use. Your only real limitation is your time and your willingness to put in the effort and experiment and do things. And this is a perfect example of that. You can make windows that look just as good with just very, 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 very basic items and tools. All you need is a little effort and a little extra time. All right, so you wanna make little windows like this for your build. These MDF frames, totally great, but we're gonna make them from scratch, or at least something that is a close approximation. In order to do this, I'm just gonna use some toothpicks. These are specifically the square variety of toothpicks, not the round ones. I'm gonna be using super glue and an accelerant to make this process faster, but you can absolutely use PVA glue, but you will have to wait a little bit longer for things to dry. Gonna need a blade of some sort. You can use your typical X-Acto or Ulfa knife, but for this, I've found that these sort of square razor blades are even better because you can cut like a guillotine, which is gonna be relevant in a moment, but you don't need this kind although you, you might have one already, and you're gonna need something to act as a square and a nail file. That's really it for building the window frames. I'm gonna make these the same size as these ones, 35 millimeters by 20 millimeters. But of course you can make these any size you'd like. So taking the square toothpicks, I need to cut down my frame. I'm gonna start with the top pieces. I could just measure these, or make some marks on a little piece of paper for reference. I do happen to have one of these, so I'm just gonna use it as a guide. Obviously, you don't need one of, one of these to do this. You want a nice square end on one of these toothpicks. You don't want a wavy cut. It's important that everything is a square, blunt cut. Take your starting piece and square it up by sanding it on a nail file or a piece of sandpaper or whatever. But nail files are a great, cheap, solution here. Once one end is nice and square, I just need to cut it. And this is why I like this kind of blade for this situation, because I can make a nice plum cut up and down. It's easier to keep it from twisting than something like this, where you kind of have to go like that. Keeping it 90 degrees to the table, I'm just going to rock and slowly cut through. True up the end and cut another one the same length. Despite your best efforts, they may not end up being the same length. Take a little bit of tape, take two ends that are nice and square and true, line them up, tape them together, and in tandem, sand them down. This way you will remove any discrepancies and get them to a point where they're the exact same length. Now I need my uprights. And if I'm gonna keep these at the same size, which was 35 mil, I don't wanna cut a length that is 35 mil. I wanna cut it a length that is 35 mil minus this amount. And an easy way to do that, set your piece that you're subtracting, butt up into it, cut to length. I'm just making one here, but you're likely gonna make several. Make yourself a little jig for cutting and just cut a whole bunch of these at the exact same size. I have to glue these together in a frame. There's a few challenges here. One is gluing these tiny joints. Another is having it not fall apart in the process. And lastly is keeping it square. So I'm gonna use my carpenter square to deal with the squareness portion of this. You could also use something like a little L of Lego or whatever, just something that has a 90 degree corner. This square actually isn't ideal because it has this little notch here that's a little bit problematic when butting into the corners, but it does the job. And the paper is because gluing this is actually gonna end up slightly gluing things down to my work 
surface. So it's just something that can absorb the glue and it can stick to while I'm building it that you know I can peel away later. So I'm gonna start with one of my top or bottom pieces, put a little bit of glue, then a little bit of glue on the end of a side piece, butt that in place, make sure it's a perfect 90 degree corner, take a little bit of accelerant, hit it, and now I can move on to the other side. This may glue your square a little bit, and that's okay, just break it away without disturbing the piece and repeat on the other side. And take your last side piece and just slide it in. Now for the cross bracing, you could go through and do as many of these as you want, you know, do several like this one. I think that just having one is plenty. Eyeball it because this one's gonna be a little shorter than the top pieces glue. It's also worth going back in with a little bit of super glue and dripping it on every joint, spreading it out flat and hitting it again. And you have a frame. I suggest making a whole bunch of these before moving on to the next step. You can just take a knife and cut the paper away. And if you end up with a lot of it on it, like I just did, I didn't get that much on there on the first one. It's really not a big deal. That's why we're using paper. You can just shave it off. You can actually go in on some sandpaper or on a nail file and give it a bit of a sand just to really flush up all of these pieces. And then I suggest spraying this with an aerosol primer, but you could certainly just brush it with some craft paint right out the gate. Now I got my little window frame all painted up. Looks like a metal window frame, but of course you could paint this however you'd like and it would work perfectly well in wood. But now we need some glass and a way to make that cool leaded effect. Again, this is sort of gonna be trying to mimic the effect that you get from those plastic pieces from shifting lands. We need some kind of rigid plastic. If you want clear, you could find some clear plastic from blister packs or packaging. This stuff works really well if you just want clear, but if you wanna go for a colored stained glass effect, well, I found something pretty cool. I bought myself a big pack of light gels. This is for filming to put on some of my lights. These packs were very affordable. I got them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna grab some. I'm sure you could find something similar in other places. You just want something that's translucent really vibrant and really rigid. But what about the leading drywall tape? This stuff is quickly becoming one of my favorite crafting materials because it has a really nice pattern at a very small scale. This stuff is also adhesive on one side and one side only, which will be very beneficial in this project. But of course you want to paint it. So I highly suggest using an aerosol primer to prime it out in black. And from there you can hit it with a metallic if you'd like that kind of look. The important thing is that when you're doing this, you should take a fairly long strip and kind of hang it and spray it from one side only and try very hard not to get anything on the adhesive side because you want to preserve this tackiness going forward. Keep it away from dusty dirty work surfaces. Because once you have it painted, you can take your plastic of choice, stick it right on. And now you have glass with leading. I personally like setting it at a 45 degree angle to the pattern so you get that nice diamond shape as opposed to a square shape, but it depends on the look you're going for. You can cut off the excess. Scissors may actually be better. And you have yourself a beautiful little leaded window. These are ready to inset into whatever your build may be and you have absolutely excellent looking windows that you've made entirely yourself from very simple and affordable materials and very, very basic tools. I really hope this serves as an excellent lesson when I say, hey, a lot of the stuff I use, I use for convenience and time saving, but it's not a deal breaker if you don't have it. You just sometimes have to think a little bit outside the box, put in a little bit more effort and mostly spend a bit of extra time to do something without the thing that you're missing. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I sincerely hope you learned something valuable. If you did, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section below. If there's some other thing you'd like me to try to make entirely from scratch that maybe you don't have access to buying, let me know in the comment section and maybe I can try to figure it out. Before today, I'd never made windows like this and I just tried it out for you guys and it worked great. And I bet if you guys play around with it, you'll come up with even better looking ones. If you do want to pick up any tools or supplies for your own hobby needs, you can check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page with links to most of the stuff that I use regularly and explanations as to why I use it. If you really enjoy these videos that I make and you want to help me keep making them every week, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon, joining the fellowship, really goes a long way to helping me invest the time and effort and equipment and all the stuff that goes into making these videos. And I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it for this week, guys. Cheers. I will see you again next week.